Hello there, everybody. It's Michelle Visage, and welcome to another episode of What You Packing. And today, all hail the queen from Atlanta. It's Tamisha Iman. Hey, darling. Hello, how are you? Well, I am wonderful. You are wearing my favorite color combo. It's black and white and red and gray, and I don't see enough of that. Thank you. One of my favorite colors as well. You hit a milestone birthday. What did you do to celebrate your big 5-0? I stayed in the house in quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for allowing me to get to this point, and I sat my butt down. <laughs> Did you eat a piece of cake? I didn't do anything, and I'm not mad because that way I can celebrate it next year. Well, honey, don't you know the clock stops ticking at 50? Hello. I'm fine with that. You were originally cast on season 12 of RuPaul's Drag Race. Correct. And you couldn't make it because you were diagnosed with? Stage three colon cancer. How did you know or did you know? Were there symptoms? Were you not feeling well? I went to my doctor and I was like, I can't get rid of this hemorrhoid or whatever the case may be. She did a quick examination. She was like, I don't think that's a hemorrhoid. You need to go and have colonoscopy. When I had the colonoscopy, I was diagnosed with stage three colon cancer and I got the call on Friday that I had made the show, but then I turned around and got a call on Sunday stating that I had to start aggressive chemo and radiation that week. Mm -mm. So like everything that I had worked for and waited for the perfect time was shattered, but it motivated me and I fought oh. to actually get to season 13. You are not only a chosen one, you are also a warrior and a survivor and you came back with a vengeance. It's so inspirational because you are of a certain age and because you did aggressive chemo and radiation, you were able to bounce back and you came and did your thing on RuPaul's Drag Race season 13. I did. Did you feel an effect mentally? How did you handle that in the high pressure world? The effect that I had is the fact that I did not disclose I had an ostomy bag. Having this ostomy bag saved my life. I was still fairly new with it, so I was getting familiar with it at the same time being challenged to be my very best. So it was a struggle to balance the two. It was a lot of stress. Physically, I was not up to par. My legs were still weak, but I was not gonna miss the opportunity. So I just wanted to actually be an example for other people, regardless of what you're going through. If there's something that you really want, push forward. Life is not over until you give up on yourself. That was not an option. Amen, honey, and you are an inspiration to me. When I heard and you told us, it was like, what? You've been doing all of this amazing work on top of the amazing life work that you're doing on yourself and beating that cancer and kicking it out the way. Right. So when you were in the workroom getting changed, did anybody notice? No. I camouflaged it well because I didn't want it to be a crutch. I didn't want it to allow me to stand out. I wanted everybody to have a fair shake. I didn't come to ride on sympathy. A bitch is broken now, but don't let me return because the fight is on. You know what I'm saying? So I'm the mother of the House of Iman. As the matriarch, you can't be just another member. You have to actually stand out and be the role model for your kids. So I wanted to be an example for my family. And at the same time, I wanted to be inspiring that, hey, 50 is not old age. The room's still sweet. <laughs> Trust oh, me. amen, honey. And what you just said was so powerful and so meaningful. And with that, you are and will always be an inspiration to people that not only are going through what you went through, but things like it. And they just need to see somebody like you, who is the mother of the house. The dynasty. Mom. Dynasty, darling, the dynasty. dynasty. The dynasty. I got so much joy when you would come out on that main stage, and I loved seeing you. I don't know if you felt that for me, because my face can be a little digging. I did. All right, good. <laughs> I would just light up when I saw you. What I loved was the pride that you took in the garments that you made. Who taught you how to sew? Actually, drag taught me how to sew. When I decided to make this my career choice, I knew other designers were expensive. People didn't want to get you your stuff on time. My mother used to sew back in the day. She never gave me a lesson or anything like that. But I was able to figure it out. As my career went on, my sewing got better. My gay grandfather used to sew for Patti LaBelle and Phyllis Hyman. Ooh! Okay. Yeah, he gave me the basis of how to do an actual gown, and I took it and I ran with it. My mother used to teach sewing. That was her side hustle. <laughs> really? And I would go with her every Saturday. It was something called Saturday Scene in Central New Jersey, and adults would go in there and learn how to sew. My mother was a teacher. She had a whole setup in the basement, and every time I said, teach me, she'd be like, get away. You're in the way. <laughs> Never taught me. So thank God you had somebody to teach you, because really, 
it's your thing. The construction of your garments is amazing. Like the red power suit that you walked in with, with those shoulders was like, girl, yes. <laughs> Thank you. You do have a drag dynasty in your house, but people, I'm assuming, already buy garments from you now. You're gonna be a very busy beaver for sure. That's amazing coming from you. Oh. You know, I would love to make a garment for you. Oh, that will happen, sold. <laughs> Done. So you did the first lip sync against Simone, and you thought, I went through all this shit. I finally come back, and here I am in the not winning group, I'll call you. Right. What was that feeling? Were you like, are you kidding me? It was disappointment at first. Mm -hmm. I was devastated. Right. It was like, oh, okay, well, this is my normal position. I always have to prove myself. Right. Being at the bottom, it just made me want to fight even more. I knew my body was working against me, but my mind was still going. The fight was still there. What was going through your mind when you heard, uh-oh, this is a sheer runway? Having to hide a physical situation. I'm the artist of illusion. Mm, go on. I have to roll with the punches. At the end of the day, nothing was gonna stop me from producing my best product on that runway. But I wasn't even thinking about the glossy bag. Mm. I never thought I would ever get the reaction I got from you guys. I was hoping for it, uh -huh. but our community can sometimes be the cruelest of them all. So my sewing is never good enough for this and it's never good enough for that. But you recognize my talent for being just what it is. And I was thoroughly grateful for that and humble just to know y'all recognize my 30 year effort in this industry. Are you kidding me? If they say it's not good enough or whatever, show them the door. <laughs> because the quality of the work that you turned out, the color combinations, you understand all the proportion, you get it. And whoever has something to say, baby, pay them no mind because they are wrong. Thank you, Michelle. Now, one moment that you had was some drama with Miss Candy Muse. It really wasn't any drama. Okay. Candy has a bully kind of spirit. Being in this industry, you can either rush to get to the top or you can enjoy the journey. Candy was trying to get to the finale and she didn't care who she stepped on to get there. And she kept excluding the fact that I was in the room and other girls was in the room. It was like, Simone is my competition, Simone is my competition. So after a while, it's like, first of all, little girl, you don't know who I am. You don't know what I bring to the table. I don't know you. We don't have to be nasty about it because I came for the sisterhood. I wanted to walk away from the show with something genuine. The comment was, I was like, even though I don't like a lot of you girls, I have to give you y'all props, y'all are amazing. All Candy heard was, I don't like you girls. Ah, uh, you know what, Tamisha? It's life experience. I can talk here woman to woman of a certain age. And I remember my older girlfriend saying things to me like, you're too young, you don't get it. And I would get so defensive and so angry because I'm like, no, I do get it. With age comes wisdom. We have to go through that only hearing the negative shit to get us to where we are today to say, you don't need to rush to the top. Take your time, smell the roses. It's worth the journey. Right. And you're speaking from experience, not just drag and the house, but I'm talking about life experience. Exactly. Are you cool now? Did you all make amends? Yeah. Good. It was just the fact that New York meets Atlanta. <laughs> I was about to say, girl, that's a New York kid, too, that was raised on the streets. Right. <laughs> and then you have a scrappy Atlanta girl, too, who's going up against it. Yeah. At the end of the day, you're not going to pump me. Period. I don't care who you are. Ooh, okay. If you could redo one look, which one would it be and why? It would be the black dress that I got eliminated in because keep in mind, I am so overwhelmed with actually packing and leaving. All of the stones and things that were supposed to go on the dress <laughs> was left on the table. <gasps> so that's the only look that I would really redo because you didn't get the full effect of it. It was a showstopper. It was just unfinished. Oh my goodness. Okay, well that explains a lot. Tell me about this beautiful piece behind you. Was this your finale number? Yeah, this was my finale number. So prior to me coming to Drag Race, keep in mind I had to learn how to walk over again. Mm -mm -mm. There was a competition in our community, a pageant, and I made this strictly for my fans, just to let them know that I still had it. You understand? Mm. And my creativity is never gonna die. So this was my evening gown. This is my new baby, one of my babies. I have several pieces, but this <laughs> right here, this is a blue iridescent on top of a nude mesh. Yes. And then I added a cape to it just to make it vintage in my version of Hawk Couture. It's absolutely stunning, but more importantly, Tamisha, you bring so much spirit 
and joy and passion to what you do. It was such an honor to get to watch you and what you brought to the main stage this season. Thank you, Michelle. It means the world to me. You don't even understand. Keep that energy going. Stay healthy. I will. Stay safe. And welcome to 50, darling. Hello. <laughs> Next time I'll be able to hug you, I hope. OK. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Virtual hug. And that's another episode of What You Pack In. I'll see you next time. Bye. Subscribe to the Drag Race YouTube channel for all things Drag Race.